Hello fellow web designers and film and TV enthusiasts. Today I'm going to show you how I recreated the Disney Plus homepage. Now when Disney Plus launched it was pretty exciting. There was a lot of cool content on there. I still love going there. There's something really warm and inviting and nostalgic about all the Disney content as I'm sure a lot of you can relate. They've got everything. They've got all the new movies. They've got Marvel and Spider-Man and Star Wars, National Geographic. So pretty much something for everybody here. I always love firing it up and going through the interface, so I thought I should try to recreate it in Webflow, just for a little practice, and I gotta say, I'm pretty proud how it turned out. It's pretty great. I got little drop-down menus of the interactions happening. I got the icons. I pretty much just had the other window open and copied it as much as I could. And I got this profile drop-down. You can go to the other profiles here, and nothing is clickable. You can't click on anything, but the effects still happen, and all of these cards down here, the different hubs for the different uh, categories exist, and the little scrolling for the different recommended shows, and it looks pretty slick. And I gotta say, when I had both windows open, it got hard to tell which one was the real one, so. And it wasn't that hard, so I know it sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, but it was really fun and it's really doable. I'm just gonna walk through the basics. It's not gonna be a full tutorial on how I built each and everything, but just to give you some ideas about how you can maybe use some of these elements and do it yourself. Let's just jump right in and see. Here I am in Webflow, this is the finished build here. And you'll see that it's not even some long, extensive page. It's really just a kind of a big chunk of a section. And in the nav bar you'll see here, or our navigation, we only have a few sections. So we have the main body, obviously, which holds everything. And we also have a nav bar up here, which kind of the most complex because of that drop down effect that I did. But the nav bar again in Webflow, it already resizes for you. So this whole website is responsive too, by the way. So everything will scale accordingly and everything will open. And the nav bar is part of that, which helps a lot. The hero slider here is just a big slider of some of the banners for the different movies that are featured. And we have this category hub. This one was a little trickier as well. So these are just divs and they have some videos behind them. And when you hover over them, that's what plays. And then these three are just Really, I just built one of them. It's just a recommended section, another big slider, just with some different dimensions set on each of the slides. And then I just copied and pasted it two more times. So then you get the three different recommended sections. And I just changed some of the class names around, which allowed me to change uh, the background images. But let's just jump into the nav bar really quick. I'll show you the structure of that. So we've got our nav bar container, right? and I just affected the spacing so it expands it a little bit. You can do that by just changing the max width. I always like to increase that a little bit more because by default the containers kind of condense things but I like a little more room. And for these, so these are all the nav links. I just found the logo. I just put that in our, our brand logo here. And these little link icons. So I actually have something saved. I just have in Figma, there's this, I'll put a link to this in this description below. but. I have this document that I found a long time ago that I still reference today. So my design process is usually I start in Figma, which is the online design tool, definitely recommend. Tons of videos on it, but it's a really flexible tool that's all free and lets you kind of build things out and build the structure of your website and then you can translate that into Webflow. But this whole document here is just a bunch of little icons and they have been very useful for me. You can just copy any of them and paste them into Figma, whichever project you're working on. So here's an old project. This was my portfolio that I had built out and you'll see that it's just, it's, this is where you can just drag and drop shapes really and add colors and elements and make it basic without click functionality, even though they do allow that. But you'll see here, you can copy and paste different elements. And I just pasted this little TV. You can change the sizing. And what the best part is that they're SVGs, so you can change the colors. So first you can put them into Figma and customize all of these elements the way you want before you export it into your actual Webflow product. And then when you're ready with the element, so these are all the Disney icons that I found, I just exported it down here as a PNG, and then it's a file that you upload to your assets in Webflow. And then really quick, there's also another thing. There is a little plugin that I have, it's called Iconify. So that document is really great, but it is a little limited, it only has certain elements. But this plugin called Iconify for Figma they have tons more, so you can search for anything. I can search for, I don't know, avocado. 
And look, they've got some avocados. And again, they I can set the custom height and whatever I want. And then when I'm ready, it just imports into the document. And I have a beautiful avocado. And again, everything is an SVG. So if I wanted this pit to be blue, I can change that. Why not? So anyway, that's how I got all these little icons. And they just live in a div next to the text. So if I just hop over to the real Disney Plus site here, you'll see I just found those icons, found the ones that matched as much as I could, and I put them in the div with the text. And under the word text here, I have another div, which is just kind of a two pixel high div with a white background. And it's uh, the width is 0% at first. And when you hover over the link, the width grows to 100%, or I think I made it 80% of the container just so it has a little more padding. But, and then that's how you just get that simple animation. It's not an underline, it's actually just a div, a little rectangle beneath it. And then hopping over here, we've got the profile section. So we've got just another div that kind of holds the text and the image there. But when you hover over it, another div appears that is hidden at first, and it has all these other profiles to pick from. So this is just a fixed div, and it's fixed in relation to the body's positioning. So when you resize the browser, it will always kind of stay on the right side there. But when you hover over it, the div, uh, the opacity fades in and the hide show property fades to block as well. So that way, this whole thing that you build out will appear. And then as you scroll down over the different profiles, the um, opacity of the, the text fades up as well. So then it comes to that white. And then over here, we've got the little add profile button that also has the hover effect. So most of these were really simple. It's just hover states in Webflow. So if I go over here, all of these were just, you can go to the hover state here, and if that's for just a simple opacity in the text, that works. But some of them, like the, so these are profile divs. When you hover over the whole div itself, then the text itself highlights. And that's where I put an interaction, because if you're targeting just the element you're highlighting over, you can do a simple hover state change in styling, but if you're hovering over a chunk of something and you want different elements within it to change, that's when you need to do the Webflow interaction. But again, super easy. And then we just have some other settings here, and then when you hover away from it, it fades back down. This big chunk here is just a slider, just a slider element. So it just has the multiple slides. I set some dimensions on the slider itself, made it 100%, but the mask is only a, a, a small, little smaller. I think I made the mask 90%, so that way it has some breathing room on both sides. And I did have to finagle with the uh, image sizes. I had to kind of inspect the Disney Plus website, figure out what their dimensions were because it is an awkward size and it's not easy to find images that are long horizontally. So I did have to put some images in Photoshop and kind of maintain some boundaries, but I don't know, you can tell they're not perfect. Some of them are pixelated a little bit. And again, this is not an image, it's a div for the slide and it's a background image set on there so it can do the cover property. This next section is just a little content hub. So these are the different brands within Disney that you can go to. They have tons of different content within each of these. So each of these is actually in a grid here. And this is a grid element that is centered a little bit in this section. And there's just a div with the same settings. And how I did all of these div cards and especially the show ones beneath it, all I did was start with the Disney one. I made sure it was complete. I did all the styling, the hover effects, all the animations that I wanted to attach to it. And then I copied and pasted them and then changed the specifics of the images and the logos. But that way it maintained all the styling because it had the same class, but I just added a combo class to make all the changes. That way I didn't have to rebuild it five separate times. So this first one here, the Disney, it's just a div. When you hover over it, it scales by like 0.03% or something. And that just makes it grow. The border colors opacity is lower and then when you hover over it it grows and there's another div positioned behind it absolutely with the same dimensions and that is a video background so that get that video effect here when you hover over you see how the video plays so the video is living behind it already it's just when you hover over the div the top div opacity fades away and then the other one's just appearing behind it and it gives the illusion that there's a video inside. And then when I did it for the other ones, I just copied and pasted the Disney one and then I just changed the classes. So this had a combo class of Pixar and I found different video backgrounds, Marvel, Star Wars, National Geographic. And another helpful resource that I use for this is Envato. So this does require a subscription. They have different plans. I was hesitant to do it because I didn't think I needed it, but 
I will say, with some of my freelance things picking up and the uh, different projects that I'm doing, it allows so much flexibility. They have really cool resources. They have all this, it's all just stock content basically. Photos, GIFs, videos, um, graphics. That's how I made my YouTube intro as well. I downloaded a template for all those movie posters that are flying around. Really cool and really helpful. They have music and sound effects, so you get your money's worth. This is Envato Elements. So that's where I was able to find the kind of uh, cartoon clouds, which is not even Pixar specific, but it works so perfectly. I found a Disney castle. That was the one Disney element they had, and I needed that. Uh, I've got the Marvel things. I've got Star Wars. It just worked out perfectly. So Envato is pretty nice. And down here, this again, I just built out one of these sections recommended for you. I created one div here. Similar hover uh, animation properties here. So the border color just fades up a little bit when you hover over the opacity. It's got a background image there uh, and set to cover. And there's some box shadow to give it some dimension. And then once I had the main one that I liked, I just copied and pasted it a bunch of times. And this is all a slider too. So the slider itself takes up 100% of the section's width, but then the individual slides are only, I think, 300 pixels wide or something. So that way, you get to see multiple of them on a screen, but it still lives on a slider that continues outwards because it's going to go take up as much width as however much content is there, how many different slides you created. You can see here that you can just keep going to the right and then the other content appears, but it's off screen a little bit. So it's kind of teasing the viewer, just like in the real Disney site, as you'll see, you can kind of see the next one appearing because then it piques the viewer's interest and it makes you click and keep scrolling through their content. So I just made sure one of these was in place and then I copied it and I added combo classes. So you'll see this is, they all have the class show div, which allows that hover and different effects. But then I did Captain America. This had a class of civil a combo class and then Ultron, Panther. So that's what's able to change the backgrounds individually. Cause if you didn't add a combo class and all of them had show div as a class, if I made this an end game background, every single thing with the show div would change to end game. So you just want to make sure you have a combo class set which allows you to build upon your previous styling. And that was my recommended for you. And then, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm a High School Musical fan. How could you not be? If you were a certain age during that time, my friend group and I were pretty obsessed. We were all theater kids. We're not embarrassed. It's still great. High School Musical 3 lives up. That was an epic movie going experience. They're dumb, they're campy, but they're also great and the music's fun and I don't care what you say. So because I watched High School Musical, I just put all these other musical movies and some other things that scrolled down. We got Hamilton on the end as well. And then I did a nice classic Disney at the bottom. And that's it, you guys. Isn't that crazy? It's pretty simple. I kind of started it just to see what would happen and I finished it in three or four hours. If you're bored and got some time and you want to practice some things, try building the Netflix homepage or the Hulu homepage. Pick your favorite streamer and, or maybe even an app. Try to just build out the homepage. It doesn't have to be functional. You don't have to know the JavaScript and make it fancy, but you can work on some design elements and build out your favorite thing and who knows what will happen. Uh, just helps you be creative and productive and I don't know, it was fun. I know I have something to show for, so hope you liked it. Show me what you're making and if you make something cool or build upon this even, let me know, I'd love to see it. So that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you.